All right, so now we have uh, 5.30 part B. And so for this one, I left uh, all this stuff up here and have my acceleration from part A right there. Just so we uh, we have all the information we need, we need. So this part of the question is really fun. It says, uh, once the rocks reach the highest point, will they uh, stay there or slide down the hill and then it says if it stays stay y and if it slides down the hill find the acceleration on the way down so uh once again we just want to kind of remember our free body diagram here uh we're going to kind of adjust it for when it reaches the highest point of the um of the hill so here we have our rocks at the tip of the hill. And once again, we have our frictional force. We'll call it N this time, just to keep everything homogeneous. Uh, and then we have, because once again, we have our incline going right here, and our normal frictional force is always perpendicular to the surface. Uh, but uh, just to keep that in there, and then we have our equal and opposite re reaction to that as our mass times gravity times the cosine of theta. And then we have the force of gravity pulling our rocks just straight down, which is going to be our mass times gravity. And then we have our acceleration pulling the rocks back down the hill once they get to the high point is our mass times gravity times the sine of theta. Then we have our frictional forces pulling it back up. So, uh, first what we want to do is find the forces that are pulling the rocks down and the forces that are uh, pulling the rocks upward. And then that will tell us based on which force is greater if the rocks are staying at the top or if they're going down. So we have our forces pulling the um, pulling it downward, which is just our uh, mass times the acceleration of gravity pulling it down. Um, so that is going to be equal to our mass times gravity times the sine of theta. And we have this sine of theta here um, as the forces pulling it down the hill. So then that is going to be equal to uh, our force of gravity, 9.8, times the sine of 36 degrees times our mass. We don't know what our mass is, that's just a variable, um, a, a scalar that we're just going to have in there that we can more or less ignore. But that is going to mean that our forces pulling us down is equal to 5.8 times our mass newtons. And now we want to find what the forces are that are pulling our rocks upward. And we know that the forces that are pulling the rocks back is the force of uh, friction. So that's going to be our kinematical frictional equation um, of the coefficient of our hill. 0 0.65 times our frictional force, which we know from Newton's third law must be equal to mass times gravity times the cosine of theta. So then, I'm running out of room here, so we know what the, uh, we know what gravity is, we know what our theta is, but we don't know what our mass is. So that's just going to be another scalar quality like this one, it is going to be equal to 5.15 times our mass newtons. And now we just see which one of these is greater. Turns out that the force pulling us down is greater ever so slightly than the force pulling us upward. So we're going to slide down the hill. So now we want to find out 
what our acceleration is going to be. And this one, I'm just going to erase this real quickly because it's kind of a long and arduous process. So, we have um, that uh, from our free body diagram that I just erased, uh, that our force is equal to mass times gravity times the sine of theta minus our frictional forces. And that's from Newton's third law that we did in part A. Um, so now we just plug everything in here that we have. We know that this part right here is going to be mass times gravity uh, times the sine of theta minus our frictional constant times mass times gravity times the cosine of theta. And then um, we also know that force is equal to mass times acceleration. And we plug this in here because we want to find our acceleration. So now we can divide our mass across here, which is nice because that's just going to cancel uh, mass out of both of our factors here. So mass is equal to, and then we'll factor out gravity here is equal to gravity times sine of theta minus our frictional coefficient times cosine of theta. And so for our frictional coefficient, we're going to use the one given to us for the rocks since we're looking for the acceleration of the rocks back down the hill. So that's going to be 9.8 times sine 36 minus 0 0.45 times cosine of 36. So now we do all this lovely math and we find that our rocks are accelerating down the hill with an acceleration of 2.2 meters per second squared.